We got her, baby. We got her. $1,000 KX250 right there. Yep, you heard that right. I messaged the seller of this 2002 Kawasaki KX250 two-stroke just seven minutes after they listed the bike and snagged it for $1,000. Now, of course, there has to be something wrong with a $1,000 KX250. The seller told me that it was just missing a cylinder head, but of course that is questionable and led me to believe that there's some other funny business going on. I went ahead and ordered a cylinder head on eBay and decided to see if I could get the bike running. I did a visual inspection of the piston after pulling the header pipe, and while it didn't look perfect, the piston and cylinder wall looked okay enough for me to at least try and start the bike. When I tried to install that used cylinder head that I bought on eBay, I realized that the bike was using different cylinder head hangers, which means this bike was running an aftermarket cylinder head previously. So this set me back on my timeline, but I found some OEM hangers on eBay and ordered those. And once those arrived, I was finally able to get the bike back together and see if I could get it running. I began to reassemble the bike. I made sure that it had spark and the spark was weak. So I was a little bit concerned about that, but I decided to continue putting the bike back together and see what I could find. So I added some coolant and two stroke fuel and this is how the first start attempt went. After that first start, I wasn't able to get the bike started again, and a couple times it had some nasty kickback. This was the point when I realized that this was not going to be a quick, easy fix, and I had a lot more work to do. I decided it was time to dig further into this bike and give it a little bit of a revival, so I ordered parts to give her a little bit more love while I tried to diagnose this non-starting issue. I ordered an air filter, fork seals, clutch cable, as well as a top end kit, and I decided to modernize the look of the bike a little bit using Duplicolor paint products to paint the triple clamps and the wheels. As I dug farther and farther into this motorcycle, it became obvious pretty quickly that some questionable mechanics have worked on this bike over its 20 year lifetime. The bolts on the bike are all completely mismatched. It seems like less than half of them are actually OEM. And once I pulled the cylinder head, I was not pleased to find that coolant is clearly mixing in the cylinder and crankcase. Removing the cylinder only confirmed this issue as I could see a nasty mixture that clearly was not just two stroke fuel. I sat and pondered for a while the best way to proceed, realizing that in order to make this a reliable motorcycle once again, I should probably pull the engine and split the cases. I also realized there is some funny business going on with this ignition coil. I have no idea what this connector between the ignition and the plug cap is. That could certainly be the culprit for the weak spark. So I pulled it apart in attempts to reconnect that cap with the ignition coil, but the wiring on the end of the coil had some damage and would not allow it to accept that spark plug cap. So I found a used ignition on eBay for $39 and hopefully that will help. While I pondered exactly how to proceed with the engine, given that it's likely the cylinder is warped, causing that coolant mixture, I decided to continue pulling the bike apart and give attention to the areas that need it. The struggle I had with this rear axle is kind of a prime example of the condition of this entire bike. This axle clearly hasn't been removed in ages. You'll notice I threaded the axle nut back on, but not all the way before hitting that axle with a sledgehammer. If you have ever had to remove a stuck axle like this, you know that really the only way to get it done is with blunt force like that. But if I were to use the sledgehammer on the end of the axle directly, it would damage those threads and make it so that you could not reinstall that axle nut. So after a little bit of heat and some calculated impact, I finally got that crusty old rear axle out and the rear wheel removed. With plans to paint the triple clamps, I preemptively removed that steering stem nut because it is easier to do so while the forks are still installed. Thankfully, removing the front wheel was not a struggle like the rear. That axle had plenty of grease on it and slid out no problem. That said, I did have some difficulty removing the forks. Now, every now and then you do have to pry triple clamps apart a little bit to slide the forks out, but I realized whoever painted this top clamp painted the inside of the clamp as well, which is a major no-go and makes it incredibly difficult to both install and remove the forks from the clamps. Now, another one I'd never seen is I could not get the top clamp off, and that is because the person had painted the inside of that clamp where it goes on the steering stem as well, finally was able to get it off with the sledgehammer. Let it be known, there is a right and wrong way to paint dirt bike parts, and most people choose to do it the wrong way. I'm looking forward to showing you how you can paint dirt bike parts with lasting results in the next part of this video series.
I removed the old piston and added it to my ever-growing collection before proceeding to work on removing the bottom end from the frame. After dealing with that rear axle, I had a feeling that this swing arm axle would be pretty well seized in there and I was certainly right. This thing took an unbelievable amount of force with the sledgehammer. I am fortunate that I did not damage the swing arm axle in the process. I used a little bit of heat and then allowed gravity to help by tipping the bike on its side and finally got that swing arm axle to pop out and was able to remove the motor from the frame. I never intended to pull this motor out of this frame. <laughs> and at this point I realized that I was just too far along in this disassembly not to complete the teardown and strip the bike all the way to the frame. Despite my best efforts, I couldn't get this linkage bolt to budge and the linkage bearings were clearly disintegrating. I removed the rear shock and decided to try a different linkage bolt to see if I could get that one out and I did in fact get that one removed. As I was hammering this bolt out, bearing rollers were falling all over the floor confirming that these linkage bearings absolutely need to be replaced and look at how gnarly the bolt is and as you can see here the link arm is stuck on the bolt on the swing arm. For all of the bikes I've worked on this is some of the nastiest linkage I've seen and it deserves to be rebuilt. At this point I laid all of the parts out to look at the beautiful mess I've created for myself. Well I have an entire KX250 on the ground here. Again, I had no intentions of going this far with this bike. There were just more things wrong with it than I expected. One thing leads to another, and all of a sudden there's a Cowie frame on my garage floor. I will say, being this far along, it's awfully tempting to do a full build. That said, I'm going to refrain. Don't get me wrong, this bike is gonna be nice. But when it comes to things like refinishing every component and rebuilding every part, I'm gonna save that for the CR250 build that I'm starting as soon as this project is done. I already did a Cowie build a couple years ago that I'm really proud of. I've still never built a CR250 and full bike builds take a lot of time. So of course this bike will still get attention where it's needed, rebuilt forks, new swing arm and linkage bearings, new chain, refinish those clamps. Gonna turn these wheels black and give them some fresh Shinko tires. Obviously clean up these axles and figure out what needs to be done to get this engine running right. And then we'll freshen the whole bike up with some plastics from MX Plastics, graphics, and a seat cover from Decal Works. This bike will not be a giveaway bike because it won't quite meet the standards of what I personally want to do for those bikes. For that type of bike, there will be no stone left unturned, absolute highest build quality I'm capable of. Just like the YZ300, congratulations to Trenton from Wisconsin for winning that bike. Trenton and I are currently discussing whether he's gonna come out here and ride it and bring it home, or whether I'm going to deliver the bike to him. So regardless of what he decides, we'll have that all figured out in the next couple weeks and be looking out for a video of meeting Trenton and giving him the YZ300. And the CR250 will be a giveaway bike. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon.